I've been using AI-assisted IDEs since GitHub Copilot was first launched. Over time, I've tried most of them. Lately, I've been leaning more and more into Claude Code. Today, I'm gonna to show you 11 tips for getting the most out of Claude Code. Let's start with the IDE extension. Go ahead and install the Claude Code extension. It's compatible with VS Code, Cursor, and WinSurf. It's pretty minimal, essentially just a way to launch Claude Code quickly, but it streamlines the process and lets you run multiple instances side by side in different panes. The terminal interface works really well. If you've never used Claude Code before, you may think a terminal for chat-based coding seems counterintuitive. But Anthropic built something that actually feels natural to use and I've grown to love. Paired with the IDE plugin, you have the best of both worlds. Number two, targeting files with mentions. You can reference files with at mentions. This allows you to target exact files when you wanna scope down what files your command will modify. Number three, choosing a model. You can choose a model with the slash model command. I typically use Opus for most tasks, but I'll switch to the default, Sonnet at the time, if Opus is being slow or unavailable. Number four, clear your chat frequently. Whenever you start a new task, use the slash clear command. There is no need to keep all that conversation history consuming your token budget. Number five, navigate through your previous conversations. You can navigate through your previous conversations using the up arrow. This works even across different sessions. This is useful when you need to reference something from an earlier session. Number six, the permission system. Now let's address the biggest frustration that people have with Claude Code and how to solve it, the permission problem. The permission system can be a little frustrating. You'll send a prompt, Claude starts working, you step away for a few minutes, and when you return, it's just sitting there waiting for permission to edit a file. Of course we wanted to edit files, that's the whole point of using it, right? Here's how to handle this. Every time I start Claude Code, I run Claude dash dash dangerously skip permissions. Despite the name, it's actually not that risky. You can think of it like Cursor's old YOLO mode. Could something theoretically go wrong? Maybe. But in weeks of daily use and with regular code commits, I've never had any issues with it. Number seven, GitHub integration. There's a really useful slash command called slash install GitHub app. Once you set it up, Claude will automatically review your pull requests. This becomes increasingly valuable as you use more AI tools because your PR volume will tend to go up. Claude catches different types of issues than human reviewers do. While humans often focus on style and naming, Claude spots actual logic problems and security vulnerabilities. You can modify the default settings by configuring the direct prompt value in the Claude code review.yaml in the .github directory. Now, since you're working in a terminal, there are some behaviors that might catch you off guard. So let's talk about number eight, terminal quirks and tricks. Shift plus enter won't give you a new line by default. You have to run slash terminal setup and Claude will configure this for you. When you drag files in, they'll open in a new tab unless you hold shift while dragging. For pasting images, you need to use control V instead of command V. To stop Claude, use escape instead of control C, which exits completely. To see a list of all of your previous messages, you can press escape twice. Number nine, message queuing. You can send multiple prompts and Claude will work through them in a logical order. Before this, I'd have to have a way to log and keep up with my next requests. When one task finished, I'd copy and paste the next one in. That meant constantly checking back to see if Claude was done or if it had been waiting for me. Now I just send everything at once. Add more comments, add update to the documentation, add refactor to this function as well. Claude knows when to wait for feedback and when to proceed automatically. Number 10, custom commands. Claude code supports custom slash commands. To add commands, just create a dot Claude slash commands folder and add the command name as a file with a markdown extension. Just write these files in natural language and you can also use the dollar sign argument string to place arguments into the prompt. The best part is you can actually have Claude create these configurations for you. And then finally, number 11, the memory system. You can quickly add to the project memory by using the pound symbol. Something like always use shad CN UI components for new interfaces and it'll save the preferences automatically. Claude.md files work hierarchically. You can have them at the project level and in subdirectories. Claude considers all of them and gives priority to the most specific ones. That's my complete Claude overview. At $100 per month for the top tier, I think it's well worth it. When you consider what you bill for your own time, having an insanely intelligent coding assistant available 24 seven is an obvious investment. Give it a try and let me know in the comments how it compares with your current setup and which features you think will be the most useful for your workflow. Thanks to this blog post from builder.io for teaching me much of what I went over in this video. I'll link to it below as well.